this? Yes! Oh, that's cool. my it. I have the other Star Wars shoes that I'm Darth Vader, Princess Leia, Han Solo, and their Vance. But that's my blanket. You like my socks, too. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Master Geo at Exotica, New Jersey with the beautiful and legendary Alana Evans. Hello, Alana. It's so great to finally meet you in the flesh. <laughs> you don't know how long I've been wanting to meet you. I know we've known each other online for what seems to be an eternity, but... It does, it does. I don't know when we really became friends, but it's just been that way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's Twitter or Facebook, but... Facebook. Or, it was Facebook. Absolutely. All right. And then what caught, uh, you caught my attention because of all the comic book stuff that you post. So well, I read your feed, I, I look at the pictures, I'm like, oh, it's awesome. <laughs> oh my god, thank you. That, that flatters me a lot. I mean, uh, you were always one of my favorites, so uh, I'm a longtime fan of yours myself. and. So I'm kind of a little bit uh, flabbergasted. <laughs> All right, a lot. Let's make it work then. Oh, right. God. There we go. There we go. Wait, wait, hold on. All right, there we go. Is that something in your pocket, or are you happy to see oh, me? Oh, I'm very happy to see you. <laughs> All right. I hope I don't smell. <laughs> no, trust me, you don't. I hope I don't smell either. Oh, you're good. OK, perfect, perfect. So when did you start? 1998. My first scene was March 20. Fourth, March 24th, and it was with Mr. Marcus. It was amazing. Real Sex Magazine number 11. <laughs> Were you nervous going into the scene? I was excited because Marcus was so sexy. I was nervous because the director was creepy as fuck. <laughs> really creepy. <laughs> really creepy. And, um, you know, uh, but no, it was easy. I got into porn because I love sex. I was a swinger. It was natural for me. It was fun. Things you've noticed. Oh, well, come on. Free porn killed our business. We all say that, so I won't get on a soapbox. But what it's done is it's caused porn to become more personal. So now you watch us on webcam, you call us on the phone. You know, we make our money now, not from our scenes, oh my God, no, but from all of our fan interaction. So um, while it's been bad for the business, it's helped other things. It's helped us take more control over our own careers. So you, mu you must enjoy that aspect of it, right? Mm. Kind of. <laughs> I have five jobs. Wow. I refer to myself, you watching Living Color? Yes. Remember the Jamaican family? Always coming in, one job to the next, that's this girl. <laughs> I got phone sex, I got texting, I got custom videos, I have scenes, I have my video game stuff, I have music, I have so many jobs I can't even keep up. <laughs> one of my things that I love about you is that you're a geek, and I love, po I love Pwn Girls. How did you come up with the idea for Pwn Girls? So, this was before Twitch was a thing. Okay. In fact, I'm probably killing you right now. <laughs> oh, it's fine. You got little legs, I got a big ass. Uh, I started Pwned by Girls, I had a, for, for some reason, everything has a date. It was September 20th, uh, 2011. We had made the announcement that we were going to do a video game site. Back then, girls were doing live streaming of, you know, just webcam stuff and they were painting their houses or baking cupcakes. And I'm like, you know what, I bet you these guys, I bet they would watch us play video games. So I asked Misty Dawn to be a part of it. When I put up the press release myself, it went everywhere, everywhere. I wasn't expecting what had happened. It was overwhelming. We had five million hits in one day, <laughs> which is amazing. But I also pulled in a lot of very negative, difficult attention. Trolls, death threats, fucking obituaries, you name it. I went through absolute hell. And uh, all because people thought I was fake. Because they didn't believe me. They didn't believe that this pretty little blonde girl with big titties was a gamer. I have been playing my whole life. I played in the arcades when we didn't have consoles. I was alive when Atari 2600 was invented. That was my first system. So I've been playing since I was probably five, you know, and it wasn't Nintendo. That came out when I was a teenager, you know, but that's where the real love of gaming probably became such a solid piece for me because of Zelda, you know, because of Super Mario Brothers, but I'm not one of those girls who says, oh, that's what I play. Oh, no. I've had fucking Sega, Genesis, uh, 3DO. I have had everything. The minute that it went from cartridges to CDs, I followed the uh, Night Trap. 
with Dana Plato. It was one of my favorite 3DO oh, you. games. You're the first person I met. It was so creepy. Yeah, was. You know why? Because you could perv on those hot little chicks in their little panties. So it was amazing. And then I never stopped. But I didn't realize it was something my fans would actually care about until I had that idea. So once I put it out there, it went crazy. Uh, Justin TV was what Twitch became. So they had been out for a few months, so the idea was there. But when we did it, nobody was doing that. So it was amazing. I still do it, the site's still up. I've had many girls come and go. Uh, obviously Misty Donna's gone. I worked with Missy Martinez. She was, out of all the gamer girls I've ever had, Missy was my favorite. Um, Annie Cruz, another one of my favorites. But see, the thing about me is I'm all about marketing, so I would do smart shit. Okay, we're gonna play a game this week. We're gonna play Tiger Woods Golf, and I'm gonna bring in one of, <laughs> I'm gonna bring in one of his girls. I'm gonna have Jocelyn, Saint, you know, Jocelyn James come and play with me. And so there was some sort of spin to make it interesting and to keep it in the press. And now, everyone's on Twitch. It's huge, and I feel so good knowing that, legitly, I was the first porn star to live stream video game action because they didn't have a format for it. Trust me, I know. I had to use, I, we tried Ustream. We did it through StreamMate because we would get booted off the feeds. In one night, the first night we did it, in one night at $1.99 per minute, we made over $2,000 on the hour game stream. That's how I knew we had something big. <laughs> now it's all free and I'm, I'm happy with that because it's more about getting out there. I get paid to play video games now. I sell product and that's what makes me the most proud. You review games too, right? I've yes. Oh, big time. I, that's, that's probably where my biggest passion is, is putting out there what I love. I write uh, The Stone Gamer for High Times, which is a huge thing for me. But it's because I think it's cool for people to get a video game from my angle. Because I love first-person shooters. I love role-playing games. You know, I get dirty. I get my hands on, okay, I'm sorry, I'm not that big a fan of Madden or, you know, NBA 2K, but I want the other games. So I like to share it with people, and people buy games because I review them, and that's awesome. I love your reviews, so I definitely wanted to hit on that. Um, what games are you playing currently? Ha -ha, Fallout! In fact, I, I want to be at home. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, the new Assassin's Creed Syndicate just came out, so I bought that last week, and I probably paid for about six or seven days. It's really good. You actually alternate between a set of twins. So you play as a brother and a sister from time to time. It's really great. But then the minute that Fallout came out, that was my life was over. And then I had to pack and come here. All I could think about is going home and going back to the wasteland. Sanctuary is calling me. <laughs> have you ever traveled with your game systems? I have. When we go to Vegas, I do. Oh. When we go to Vegas, I do. When I do local comic book shows that are close to my house, I'll take a TV and console with me so guys can play. We'll do uh, gaming tournaments. Uh, we do a lot of panels, things like that. So I just feel very blessed, you know, but it's real. I love it. That's my, that's my heart, you know. This is my fucking logo from Pwned by Girls. This is how important it is to me, you know. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why I love you, because I know you're honest about it, you know. And I don't want to be a dick, but some people are always like, oh, she's a fake geek girl, but I can't. Oh, no, that's exactly what they try to say. Yeah. I've been through it, and I'm like, okay, well, let's play. Sit down. Oh, and the, the best one was, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name drop her. My gamer achievement score on my Xbox console is almost 32,000 points. That's a real gamer. The one girl who came out of the gate when I first started giving me all kinds of shit, they were so mean, they were so nasty. And when I found her gamer score, and at that point I was probably like 15,000 and she was at like 4,000. I fucking took, you know, her profile and I put a pwn stamp on it and posted it everywhere because, bitch, you can talk shit on me, but I got more gamer points than you do, so you suck. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm a math girl. <laughs> All right, so you've been to San Diego a bunch of times. I am jealous of that. How kick-ass is San Diego? It's, well, 
San Diego Comic Con is probably the coolest con that you could ever go to because everybody's there. And now, you know, I remember when San Diego Comic Con wasn't in San Diego. It was Comic Con. It was at a small, like, the Shriners Auditorium. It was literally a small, nerdy comic book show with tables. And that was it. You know, the biggest people there were voices from Transformers, you know? And so, now it's so mainstream, it's so huge because there are so many geeks within all of us that they finally figured it out that this is what we love and it's cool. <laughs> so you've been going there for a while, haven't you? I, I, I've been, uh, yes, I went quite a, quite a few times back in the day when it was smaller. When it got bigger it became harder to get into. But I made some great friends, I volunteer with the Hollywood Sci-Fi Museum. So I go with them to a lot of the shows. I help them raise money, I volunteer. So for me, it's not like I just show up at a table and sign autographs. I'm not getting paid to be there. I'm there for the love of it and for, you know, the fun of it. It's important and it's special to me. All right, well, we both got Star Wars shit on, so you excited for the, the movies? Oh, The Force Awakens. Yes, I'm so ready. But people are asking me if I'm gonna go on day one. I'm actually not. Neither am I. No, no, and I, it's not because of the lines, the cosplay, it's because of the world we live in now. So I'd rather play it safe, wait a week, and then go, you know? Back in the day when I was a kid, we, we would be afraid to like go see Boys in the Hood because maybe someone would pop off and be crazy because that's how it was then. Now, the idea of going to a Star Wars movie and someone maybe being violent is far more of a reality. And, and so I, this is so public for me to be here, right? So I try to kind of stay out of, you know, things like that just to stay safe. I don't know if it's a thing over on the West Coast, but I know in New York they said you can't bring lightsabers, no masks to, oh. to the... I don't know if they're going to prevent the cosplay here. I know you can't bring weapons. I know in that they won't allow weapons. They might not, you know, it may just be a universal thing, especially because of what would happen with Batman. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. why. That's why yeah. it makes sense. I mean, when we go to these Comic Cons, you know, when we dress up and we do our cosplay, we have to go to the weapons check booth. Yeah. And even though we don't want to see that stupid wristband wrapped around this awesome little plastic me weapon that we probably made ourselves, it's better knowing that you're safe and that you're okay and everything is fine. And it's sad that that's the world we live in because we just want to have fun. So, when did you start cosplaying? Uh, actually, when I started Poem by Girls. I'm like, wait, this is a thing? I can dress up in my favorite characters and in public, not on Halloween? <laughs> yes. So my first cosplay, and it's my favorite, I love playing uh, Baby Doll from Sucker Punch. Because that's that's my movie. If I want to get in the mood, I watch Sucker Punch. I know that is so weird, but that's like that's my go-to chick movie. I like that. Besides flip. Spartacus, you know. So uh, yeah, so I started with that, and in the beginning, you know, you're buying your costumes, you're doing whatever. Now I make them. Now I make my own costumes, and to feel the pride and the joy of making your outfit is the coolest thing. I made my Silent Hill nurse. I made the mask, the plaster of Paris, the whole thing, and that's now the fun and the excitement. It's not just being at the con, it's the months of preparation beforehand of making that costume absolutely perfect. Awesome, all right. Any final words, Alana? My gamer tag is Super Pink Ninja. I love playing with my fans. They are my ninjas, so absolutely add me because I will play with you. <laughs> All right, where can they find you on social media? Alana Evans XXX on Twitter and Instagram. I also have Pwned by Girls on uh, Twitter, I believe, I have a Facebook page, all that stuff. But I send all of the traffic to pwnedbygirls.com. All right, thank you so much, Alana. Thank you. It's so good to see you. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye.